Hello everyone and welcome to Intro to Well Machine Me. This video will be something like episode 0 for the tutorial series I'm going to make and in this video I'm going to briefly explain about machinima, types of well machinima over the years and the tools or software for it. So machinima is a blend of two words, machine, cinema. By definition, machinima is a method of filmmaking that utilizes game engines. Machinima became popular due to, due to its simplicity, low cost, and flexibility. For example, in Machinima we don't need any actor to play or any stunt double to perform acrobatic moves, as everything can be done inside the game engine. This ease of use allows almost anyone to create their own film. And for those of you that are wondering about Source Filmmaker or SFM having a similar definition, Technically, SFM is a machinima, it's just that Steam prefers to have their own name. Since World of Warcraft is quite a popular game back then, it has also become a media for machinimators. While machinima has undergone various evolution for the past years, and there are a lot of different styles for each machinimator, but most of them are only divided into three categories, and a plus one that I think worth mentioning despite being a part of the tree. The first style or method is what most people nowadays call puppeteering. Basically what we do is we lock into the game and move our character, use emotes and other stuffs while recording the screen. Most of the machinimators that use this technique are the old ones like Martin Falch who made the Tales of the Past, which probably most, almost every one of you are familiar with and Mindflame, who made Illegal Danish. But there's also several relatively new machinimators who still puppeteer, like Tacket, the creator of Vanilla series. In case you just knew, go and <coughs> check out their channel quick. It is a very hilarious series. And then Search Movies, you probably knew him from the fine art of fan art. He made Pride and Demon Heart. And then again, check him out if you haven't. And also, Nixium's Warlock series. Now, puppeteering has its limitation. First of all, is that you don't need quite a lot of people to puppeteer. Of course, if you're not really planning on creating some huge movies like Tales of the Past or Demon Heart, uh, you want you only want to create something small like Nixium's Warlock series. This is probably not that concerning. But the point is that you can't lock into two characters at the same time, which will limit the number of characters in your machinima unless you have a lot of friends. And the second problem is direction, which with more than one person doing it, you need to direct every one of them to when to do this or what you should do next and when someone makes a mistake, the whole scene will be screwed up and you have to retake it. Then lastly, you need to match the time. Like for example, if you want to if you want to have a scene in the day, like in the noon, then you need to gather people at that hour and finish before the in-game sky turns dark. Now for the tools needed, I haven't delved into this method much. I didn't use it myself because none of my friends actually played WoW and the subscription is pretty costly. But I don't think you will need a lot of softwares unlike other methods. First of all, definitely World of Warcraft because you need to be in game. Second, uh, recording software. Um, OBS is free but it's a bit too complicated for this kind of recordings. Others that I recommend are Fraps, DX Story, and Nvidia Shadow Play. Third, the, this is not a compulsory, but a private server is recommended. This is because you just don't know when the other players will disturb your filming. And with a private server, you can modify the world to your liking. Like, for example, you want Arthas to be inside the Lion's Pride Inn, you can do that in a private server. For private servers, I recommend using either RP Haven or Role Playing Heaven or Get Mainless. 
RP Haven, as its name said, is an online private server, which is a place for RP. -ing. Most of my friends over the League of Machinima, like Laurentium and Kanj, or Kange, uh, I still don't know how to spell this name correctly, uses this server for filming either puppeteer or just a background. And yes, you can modify the world. Get Mangus, on the other hand, is an offline private server, so you run the server with your own computer. And Get Mangus is really easy to install and easy to use. And since it's your own server, you can do pretty much anything you want inside it. But the last that I knew, it can only run up to Cataclysm, so you can't actually record Legion, Miss of Pandaria, Worlds of Draenor, Battle for Azeroth because the Devil of Her haven't finished the other expansions but on the bright side you can actually film in the pre cataclysm world so if you want to go to Old Orgrimmar or something it's possible these two servers however is not something really playable Quests are bugs, scenarios don't run, so on and so forth, so just use it for machinima needs. Third, again, not compulsory but recommended, is Free Foresight or FFS. For those who don't know, FFS is a WoW camera software that allows complex camera movements. However, this tool is no longer being developed due to its misuse in PvP, so Blizzard just banned this software. And but it's still downloadable, but only can be used in Worlds of Draenor. Which of course you can use a private server for Worlds of Draenor. Then last but not least is an editing software. And it will do whether you're used to Adobe Premiere Pro, Mac is Vegas, or even Windows Movie Maker, you simply need something to assemble the recordings and voice actings. Now moving on to the second style, it is what most people call Nixium style, so I don't really agree with it. Some of machinimators even before Nixium used this method, so instead I'll call it green screen machinima. Green screen machinima is about the easiest and simplest method of making a machinima. Unlike puppeteering that requires a bunch of people, green screen can be done by a single person, of course excluding the voice actors. This method is still the most popular to be used due to the ease, of, due to the ease and lot of tutorials covering it. Or maybe everyone are just obsessed with Nixium, I don't know. Some of the other machinimators that use this method are Conch, Laurentium, Evil Wow, and Cynix. Cool guys, check them out. However, compared to the others and depending on the skills, green screen machinima creates the most unrealistic look. Although, but what, by what I mean by unrealistic is that it's hard to match the character to the background perfectly. And when you put him beside an in-game model that is included in your background recording, you can see the difference clearly. The tools you'll need are WoW Model Viewer, shout out to Geronimo for creating this amazing software. Basically what it does is that it loads a WoW model and allows you to use the in-game animation. I'll go deeper into this software later on. Then the game itself, along with the recording software. This time, Fraps or the X Story is more recommended, especially for the one model viewer. It's something that's that'll be really difficult for OBS to handle. You can also include private servers and FFS to the list, and then a compositing software. For those who are unfamiliar, editing refers to cutting, putting together footage, and matching the sound, while compositing refers to putting one footage atop another 
like green screen or adding special effects short of something like that. For an easy comparison, After Effects is considered as a compositing software, while Premiere Pro is considered as an editing software. The most popular would be After Effects. Almost everyone uses it. There is also Maggie's Movie Editor, Maggie's, Maggie's Movie Edit, or some are maybe more familiar with, with its old name, <coughs> Sony Movie Studio, which is used by Miracle once, and it's also quite good. However, in this series, I'll be using After Effects. Then, lastly, an editing software which kind of optional since you can actually edit inside a compositing software although it's not really comfortable and a lot of people don't recommend it. The third method that I want to mention is 3D animation. A lot of people thought that it's hard to get into but once you get the hang of it, it's not too, it's not so bad. Even most 3D animation methods don't want to return to green screen. Some of the machine methods that use this method are pivotal animations, he made silent movies which are really good, definitely check him out. Cambrio, an Unreal Engine user, made some good machinimas. And then Sir Tomshire, who can't do shit without me. Roger Raya, Duran, and some other machine makers. There's quite a lot of 3D users. 3D, however, is probably the most demanding for your computer compared to other methods, especially if you want the good looks. My GPU kind of broke due to way too heavy rendering. And this method also requires the most patience and dedication, especially in the setting up phase, unless you have a team. For tools, we will still need WoW Model Viewer to export the model into 3D as well as the game because without it we won't be able to load WoW Model Viewer. Then of course, uh, 3D software. Blender is free, but I consider it as hard to learn. Maya is generally used in most movie industry such as Disney, so if you plan on focusing there. Maya is the top recommendation. 3ds Max is also a viable option, but if Maya is available, it is always preferable to use Maya instead. Houdini is more of a visual effect 3D software, but yeah, if you want to get more to visual effects, then go ahead and use it. Uh, however, in this series, I'll be using Cinema 4D, which is actually more directed into motion graphics. However, I consider it to have the most user-friendly UI and very easy to get into. The other reason, the other reason for me using Cinema 4D is the machine animators that are good enough to share the techniques and do tutorials. Most of them use Cinema 4D, so I haven't learned my uh, Blender. You can also opt to use Unreal Engine or Unity, but these two aren't exactly a 3D software, so animating it directly inside will be a bit troublesome. Some machine animators like Tomshire, for example, choose to animate in Cinema 4D, but put it inside Unreal Engine to render, because for the same render quality, Unreal Engine render is way faster and lighter compared to the 3D softwares I mentioned above like Cinema 4D. The next tool would be WoW Export Tool or previously known as Moralem in OBJ Exporter. This software will allow you to export the world or the map of WoW into a 3D object. Again, I'll go deeper about this in the series later on. Then lastly, we will we still need an editing software while compositing software is optional. Now these three methods are most common thing, but there's one more that I want to mention. 
there's no name for it, but I'll just call it as pseudo 3D. This method is a combin is a combination of 3D animation and green screen machine work. The idea is to animate your character inside a 3D software, but then you render it atop of a green screen or a transparent background and load it into a compositing software and do the rest like how you do a green screen machinima. Some of the machinimas that do this are Rimlav and Captain Grimm. Another two cool machinimators. Go check them out. Okay, so this ends our video. In the next episode, we will start on green screen machinima where we will first be setting up our World of Warcraft for background recording. Thank you very much for those who listened to the very end. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and see you in the next episode.